She's unquestionably Kelly Stafford Strong. I'm relearning how to move again. Your brain just gets tired quicker because it's trying to figure everything out. I mean, I push myself, I try. For the first time since her brain tumor battle, the wife of Lions quarterback Matthew Stafford is sharing her story exclusively with Local 4. Her stunning diagnosis earlier this year took many people by surprise and made headlines across the country. Now, as she continues to recover, Kelly is choosing to share her story, hoping to help others who may be facing a similar struggle of their own. Hank Winchester sat down with the Staffords, and Hank, I understand that you learned about Kelly's tumor shortly after it was diagnosed. Yeah, as you both know, Kelly and Matthew have been good friends of mine for a number of years, and when family members and friends first heard about the brain tumor, we were obviously very concerned and worried, but we all knew one thing. Even though Matthew is the big, strong quarterback, Kelly herself is very tough, and we knew she would win this battle. I remember sitting down with him in the waiting room and just losing it, just thinking about our girls, everything, and the unknown. Imagine hearing you have a brain tumor. But I also remember at that point looking around in that waiting room. Yeah, it, I'm sorry. You're fine. At all the other people sitting there waiting to get looked at and reminding myself that people go through this every day. Yeah, yeah it was tough. Um, obviously, I'm not the, wasn't the person directly going through it, you know. She is, so I can't imagine being in her shoes. Kelly's symptoms happened, were hard to ignore. I just got a massage, but when I got up, it was a completely different feeling. The room just kind of started spinning on me. Then it happened again and again. I was holding our newborn at that point, and I kind of just like almost threw her to Matthew because I felt myself going down. But when she was holding Hunter and, and started to get real dizzy and, and thought she might fall down and hand her to me real quick. Um, I thought it was time to go at least try to get her looked at and see, you know, if it is vertigo, um, you know, what they can do to try and help her. A quick trip to a local ER didn't bring many answers, but Matthew was concerned. He reached out to the Lions team doctor who recommended an MRI. We headed back to the doctor and I don't know if this doctor didn't know that I didn't know. Um, but she pulled, like, we, she sat, we sat down, she pulled up my MRI, and she was like, okay, well, here's your brain tumor. And immediately, I think Matthew and I were both kind of like... What? Yeah. D we had no idea. Kelly had an acoustic neuroma brain tumor, and while benign, the surgery itself can be very complicated. It can cause anything from a loss of hearing to facial paralysis. The next step, finding the right surgeon to handle the delicate operation. Our team doctor was kind of helping me facilitate, or us facilitate some visits. We went to Arizona, um, we did UCLA, and uh, actually the guy in Arizona um, that we talked to, he worked with um, Dr. Thompson at U of M. The Staffords know they're fortunate. They could have gone anywhere in the world, seen any doctor for this procedure. But it was Dr. Gregory Thompson here at the University of Michigan that would perform the operation. How close do you think she was to having some sort of a level of hearing loss? Well, I, I think she was very close. There, there were several times when we would wait three to five minutes for the, uh, for the hearing wave to come back. The surgery itself was scheduled for six hours, but lasted 12. Believe it or not, still too young to know really how pagers worked, but uh, you can't get a real long uh, message across. Right. Um, so I understand that. You know, they couldn't go, here's three paragraphs of what's happening. Right. It was kind of like, ran into a hurdle, expect the surgery to go two hours longer than expected. And then maybe another one, you know what I mean? It was just kind of updates similar to that. Everything's on track, Kelly doing well. The moments after that marathon surgery, difficult to say the least. I remember being there night one, um, seeing her, I mean, trying to sit up was like, I mean, just completely wobbling like a child. Heading home, a brand new challenge. Remember the Staffords have three young girls and Kelly has always been a very involved mom. I feel like kids are great in the sense that you can't dwell on things. They make you get up, they make you keep going, they make you do these kind of things, but 
The problem was is I, I literally couldn't do those. I couldn't get up. Remember, at this point, Kelly can barely move, and any noise can cause overwhelming pain. And the hardest part about it was coming home to a, a quiet home. Um, I knew that's what I needed, and I knew that's what the doctor said I needed. But um, when, you, when you go through this, I feel like the first thing I want to see are, are my kids. That transition was, was extremely difficult, and the first time I saw them, I remember like, just like, I was extremely emotional about it. But I remember being so excited to see them, but I had zero energy. I sat on a bench and just watched them play. And Kelly says she relied on her husband, her mother, her nanny. I told Matthews, I, I think about those people who go through this and don't have these kind of privileges that we had I, and how they heal. I mean, they have to be complete rock stars because I, I truly, genuinely don't, don't know how I would have done it without these people. Her husband, who carries the weight of an entire football team on his shoulders, suddenly became caretaker number one. He never left my side. I mean, when I say I couldn't do anything, I literally, like, he had to be by my side at every moment. In just four short months, she went from this to this. I'm relearning how to move again. They said it would take like a like a year for my, you know, energy to really be back to what it was. I mean, I push myself, I try, and um, it, it's really because I have a great support when I come home. She's an incredible role model to our girls and to a bunch of little girls out there. Just, um, just really, you know, proud of her. You know, we're also proud of her to see the progress she's made. And you look at that video of her at U of M, tiny steps, and then a few months later, kickboxing. And she's asked me, do you want to go kickboxing? I'm healthy. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that workout. But it's incredible. That's how dedicated she is to getting healthy for herself and for her family. But does she still, she still has that brain fog, right? She's still got to be kind of a little tired. Yeah, she, she is tired. And that can take time. That can take up to a year. But uh, the doctor is so impressed with her recovery so it's far. Unbelievable. And, and what people probably didn't realize is you, the first thing you want to do after surviving something like that is hug your kids, hug right. your loved, uh, loved ones. And she was unable to do that for as much as she wanted to. So that just it tells you just how tough that was. Yeah, I mean, remember, three kids under the age of two. There's a lot of commotion in that house, yeah, so you, and yeah. you have to keep it quiet. To keep it quiet. Yeah, 